Hello everyone, good morning. Thank you for joining me today at this session about uh, Micronaut in Action. Uh, before I start any detail about the talk, let me introduce myself very quickly. Uh, I'm Ivan Lopez, Ilomar on Twitter. I work at Object Computing. Uh, OCI is the company behind both Grails and Micronaut Framework. I'm a member of the team. Uh, I'm also the coordinator of uh, Groba, the local Groovy user group in Madrid. I am a Groovy Java Grails developer. I used to organize Grits. Uh, Grits is, was a conference about only Groovy, the Groovy language, for the past seven years. Uh, for next year, uh, there will be a, a new main organizer. And we've changed a little bit the scope of the of the conference. It's it's going to be more a Java oriented uh, conference about microservices, about JVM languages, even Android. So if you want to to come to Madrid next March, uh, the call for paper is open. And I'm also a regular speaker at uh, different conferences. So uh, a month ago. I wrote this tweet. Uh, I was thinking about how to do this talk, and I thought about uh, doing a live coding session. And pretty, some of you guys uh, like the idea, and also the DevOps account. So this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to introduce Micronaut um, just with a few slides, and then I will go to, to live coding to show all the things that you can do with Micronaut in something like 45 minutes. So, uh, Micronaut is a new JVM framework uh, that allows develop Java uh, microservices applications with, sorry, with Java, Ruby, and, and Kotlin. Everything in Micronaut is done at compilation time, uh, so you don't need to worry about uh, runtime proxies, runtime reflection, everything, all that stuff. Uh, the, mic the, the framework is reflection free. There are no runtime proxies. Everything is done at compilation time. So when you start your application, uh, you don't need to worry about uh, reading and loading into memory all your meta information about your classes, about your bins, about your or artifacts, because everything is already there, uh, generated at compilation time. Uh, we use uh, annot annotation processors for Java and Kotlin and AST transformations for Groovy. We also have a, a dependence injection. If you are now a Groovy, uh, sorry, a Grails or a Spring developer, um, the dependence injection is exactly the same because we do like that. We are we feel comfortable with that kind of dependency injection. So you will see that it's exactly the same, but done at compilation time. And we also wanted to make uh, the framework really simple and easy to, to test. We uh, test application should be really simple and easy, and we also want to achieve that with, with Micronaut. Uh, also, Micronaut is natively cloud-native because it's a framework developed from the grown up in 2017 and 18. So uh, now we talk about microservices, we deploy our applications on the cloud, and we want to have a lot of features out of the box like server discovery, distributed configuration, uh, distributed tracing, uh, being able to, de to deploy a, a, an executable jar, a Docker image, uh, all that stuff, it's uh, valuable in Micronaut. Of course, it's a reactive framework, uh, because now everything is, is or should be reactive if, if you want to do that. It's based on Netty. And with all that kind of things, uh, you can have really, really fast the startup of the applications. And uh, Micronaut application has a really, really low memory footprint, because you don't need to read everything uh, at the startup. So basically, that was all. Uh, as Linus Torvalsell said, uh, talk is cheap, show me the code. So let's uh, start with, with Micronaut. So if you want to start developing Micronaut applications, you can install the, uh, the CLI tool. It's not mandatory. It's optional. You can create um, an application from scratch. But it allows you to do a lot of things uh, really simple. So the, f the the basic or the simplest way to install um, Micronaut it's using SDK Manager, uh, SDK Man, uh, SDK install Micronaut. It's going to install. I already have installed it, the latest version 1.0.1, which was released this last Tuesday. And now with MN, uh, you can pass more um, command line arguments, but without arguments, you have an interactive mode. And here you have auto-completion. You can create uh, applications. And I want to, to show you two commands here. Uh, the first one is um, list profiles. So these profiles are kind of global parent templates to create your applications. Um, we have, for example, one for CLI applications, for 
deploying functions to AWS Lambda for Kafka, and service is the one we main, we use for, for our regular um, applications. So you can also see uh, information about this profile, and all the things that you can see here are features that we provide out of the box to, to allow Micronaut to integrate with a lot of different things. So if you want to use, for example, Eureka for discovery, for service discovery, you have you, you can only need to add this feature, and the, um, the CLI will create everything for you with all the dependencies and everything configured there. You have integration with Ibernate using Gore on JPA, different uh, data source connection pools, Kafka support, uh, management with endpoints, health, uh, micrometer, micrometer for metrics, uh, Neo, Neo for Jable driver, Mongo Reactive, RabbitMQ, uh, Swagger, a lot of things. So the only thing you need to do is use the right uh, dependency or the right feature. So what I'm going to do is create an application. Uh, let's call encrypt service. And the only feature I'm going to pass is, uh, is a Spock for, for testing. By default, Micronaut will create a Java application uh, built with uh, Gradle. If you want to use Maven, you can also uh, set Maven as a parameter. And as this is Java, uh, by default, it uses a unit, but I do prefer uh, use Spock. So uh, let's import the project and let's start doing doing things. So it's a standard project, and what I'm going to do is start with my encrypt controller, right? So um, this is going to be uh, a controller, and I want to expose this uh, in the in the root URI, and then I'm going to create a very simple uh, get method with uh, this endpoint, encrypt, slash, and the text. And this will return a string, encrypt, string, text. And here, uh, I don't have time in this, in this demo to do a really complicated uh, encryption thing. So what I'm going to do is use just a really string build. Uh, text dot reverse dot to a string. So this is my encryption, right? I'm, I'm only reversing the text. And I'm going to return encrypted, right? So with this code, I can now start my application from inside the IDE, it's a standard Java application. And you will see that uh, I can send, so the application already started, and I can send a curl, localhost, 8080, encrypt, Crypt. Hello, and that's all you can see here. My text encrypted, right? So not so fancy, just a, a really quick uh, application. But we are going to add more features. So uh, the first thing I want to add is just uh, Micronaut by default use uh, JSON to communicate. So instead of returning a string, what I'm going to return is, for example, uh, my message. I'm going to create this class. And here I'm going to store uh, the text that I want to to encrypt. So I need an, an empty constructor. Uh, if you want to avoid all these kind of verbose uh, code, you can use, for example, Lombok if you want. Or if you use Kotlin or, or Groovy, you are done because you don't need to put everything here. So I'm going to do this. And here I'm going to return a new uh, my message encrypted. Right, so I have this, and by default this is a Pollo, so Micronaut will serialize this using Jackson to J uh, to JSON when we return this. But let's going to to test this. So I'm going to write an interface, and I'm going to use a, a I'm going to just code the interface, and Micronaut it's going to implement this interface for me at compilation time. And this interface uh, it's a, an at client. I have the same. Uh, endpoint, and I'm going to just use uh, the same thing or the same method, right? I can use um, the same kind of get annotation for both the client, in this case, encrypt client, uh, and the server. And now with that, uh, I can, um, sorry, I can create my encrypt, encrypt, controller spec. 
Uh, as I said, this is a spoken uh, specification. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is uh, inject an embedded server. Application context. Application context dot run. Uh, I'm going to run this embedded server, and I like to use a Spock because I have annotations like this auto cleanup, which basically will close the server after the, ten the test has finished. And uh, with at share, I can create a shared variable for all my tests. And I also need an encryption client, which I'm going to get from the embedded server get bin encryption client. And now I can finally. I uh, write my test, so test encrypt controller. And the test is pretty, the test is pretty simple. I expect that when, when I call uh, encrypt with, uh, I don't know, hello devbox, uh, remember this is going to return a pollo, so I need to get the text inside that. This will be uh, this one, hopefully, L E H, right? Let's see. So I can run the test. Uh, it's compiling everything for the first time. Bootstrap uh, doing the class loading. And uh, as you can see, in 600 milliseconds, uh, everything was running or everything executed. Uh, this, is not, this is not a unit test. Here we are, go we are starting a, um, a embedded server, a, a regular server, and we, we are doing a full end-to-end -end or integration test, right? So everything is the real um, infrastructure. We are not mocking anything. And this is one of the things we want to, what we want to, to achieve because sometimes we don't write um, functional tests or integration tests because it takes too much time to bootstrap your, our applications. And we write uh, unit tests, which is most of the time we shouldn't do that. And uh, I'm going to copy and paste the same test twice because uh, most of the time of this test is spent doing the class loading. But once you have done the class loading, you have more than, I don't know, you, you usually have more than one test in, in, your, in your Java class, on your Ruby class. You can see that the second test only took 40, uh, sorry, 24 milliseconds. And I want to show you that I'm not cheating. Uh, I'm going to add this. Um, uh, I'm, going to ena I'm enabling the trace level for the HTTP client. And as you can see here, this is the whole um, uh, HTTP traffic. Uh, we start the server at a, on a random port uh, in the test environment, uh, accept, um, close. We have the content type, application JSON. And you can see here uh, the body, the JSON body of, the, of our Pollo, right? So everything, everything is done at compilation time, the client, and, and we bootstrap the full server to run our, our tests. OK, so uh, let me do this. I'm going to remove this duplicated test. So this kind of doing things, it's not very bad. Uh, with JUnit 5, it's even worse. But uh, what we have done to improve this, your experience as developers when, when testing your applications is that uh, we have created a new, a new library and with this library on the class path, what you can do is uh, basically annotate your test with a micronaut test. And this annotation uh, um, adds under the hood a JUnit 5 and a Spock extension. So with that, you can delete all this code, remove this, and here do just inject. And now run the test again. Everything should work, should work as expected. The, the embedded server is bootstrap, it is closed, uh, the, the encrypt client is injected, but you have you, you got you only need to focus on your test, right? Pretty simple. So what else? Okay, so um, another thing that you want, as I said, is make your code reactive. So by default, uh, this code uh, it's blocking because uh, I'm returning a pollo. If you return a reactive type, Micronaut uh, knows that and will run the code on the uh, here this code on net even loop. Uh, as this is blocking, a uh, Micronaut moves this this code to another uh, thread pool. But I want to make it reactive, so I'm going to just here. Uh, I'm going to use Arex Java. I'm going to return a single. So uh, just with that, 
now my controller is reactive, I need to, um, let me close this, this. I need to use the same signature for my client. And then for my test, this is not work, uh, this is not returning yet my, uh, my object. So I need to here, to do here, uh, I need to save. Oh, come on. Blocking. What's happening? Single. Okay, the, the, the import was, was uh, missing. So blocking get dot get text. And running the test again, it should pass, right? Come on, okay. So you can see we have a, a non-blocking reactive uh, HTTP implementation or server. We have our client, it's uh, also non-blocking, this one, sorry, and, and our test. So uh, when you have microservices, you want to do more things because doing everything inside uh, your application, it's not microservices, it's creating a monolith. And when doing that, uh, you probably want to have some kind of service discovery. So uh, to do that, I'm going to add a new dependency. Uh, I'm going to add a dependency for, for console. And I also need to add here, uh, basically, uh, the console configuration. So uh, console config, sorry, let me do this here. So you don't need to worry about this because if you use the feature when you create the application, all this configuration will be there for you. So I'm enabling console registration and by default, uh, Micronet will use localhost local 8500. If you define any of those variables, Micronet will use them. So I need to start console. I'm using Docker for, for running console. And then uh, what I'm going to do is uh, start my application. And you can see here on console UI that uh, once my application, sorry, I'm running the wrong application. I was running the test. So application started and it already registered in console here with, with, this, uh, with this name, encrypt service. So uh, another thing I want to show you before going forward is uh, doing uh, dependency dependency injection because uh, we do we do not put our business logic in, in our controller right so here we, we have our encryption thing inside the controller but we don't want to do that so what you can do uh, you can create another class encryption service uh, this is going to be a bin sorry this is going to be singleton for create a singleton bin here I move my business logic from my controller. And what I only need to do here is inject my encryption service. I am going to use a constructor injection that allows me to define my encryption service final. Uh, you can also use at inject or setter injection if you prefer. And here, the only thing I need to do is return uh, this, right? So uh, I can run my test again and everything sorry everything should pass exactly as it did before but now i've moved all my business logic out of my controller right and with that the only thing the last thing i want to show you about this microservice is that uh, i want to to be able to run more than one instance of my microservice so i'm going to do this uh, because as you saw, Micronaut starts by default on port 8080. Defining this as minus one makes Micronaut to start on a random port. So what I can do now is to start more than one instance of my microservices because I want to consume them later. So I have one in this port, 29.1.7.9, and another one and another random port. So going back to, to console, we have seen here both microservices uh, register. So let's keep it there here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create another microservice. And the only thing I'm, go I'm going to add here is the, um, the same one as I added before. I want to add the discovery, the discovery client, uh, discovery console. So adding this feature discovery console will create 
um, will add the same things that I did manually, uh, setting the right configuration on the application YAML and adding the right dependency to the to the Bitdoll Gradle file, right? So we, we have here uh, the discovery client, and we have here the console configuration. So as I, as I said at the beginning, uh, you don't need to use uh, the CLI if you don't want, but it's nice because it allows you to, to have a, a fully functional application without worrying too much about the details. If you want to add an, that feature into an existing microservice, you can create a new application with the feature you want, take a look at the difference, and, and copy that dependencies or configurations to your existing class. So I'm creating this application because this gateway application, uh, because when you have um, some kind of uh, microservice architecture, you don't want to expose all the microservices to, to their clients, right? So one pattern that you can use is create a, a common entry point, this, this kind of gateway. And this gateway is the only one that is going to talk to all your microservices architecture, this encrypt client, your, I don't know, re re recommendation service, your billing, whatever you have. So uh, in this application, I'm going in this uh, microservice application, I'm going to create uh, my gateway controller. Uh, again, a controller. And here I'm going to expose it something like API slash, and I can say something like this. I want to use this API version variable, and it is not it, if this variable is not defined, for example, in the application YAML or when you start the application, uh, it's going to use V1 uh, as default. And then I'm going to cheat a little bit because I need to copy this. So you usually uh, don't do this. Uh, I need my, my client and I need my POYO. So what you usually do is put, put this common uh, code into a, another jar. You create a multi-project build. You put these two, three, four classes in a common jar and you add those jar to both projects. So both of them can use the same share uh, kind of dependencies. But here I don't have enough time to create the multi-project build. So I'm going to um, I'm going to just copy and paste the dependencies, right? And now I need to do two things. Here, this is going to be the entry point. So uh, I'm going to use this client, but instead of connecting to the to, to, to the own local host uh, application, I'm going to connect to the service that I call encrypt service because this is the name that the other service uses when it registered itself in, in console. And then in my controller, I'm going to use the same as before, private final encrypt client. And here I'm going to uh, return encrypt client encrypt text, right? So my entry point, my gateway microservice application, it's going to use this generated at compilation time uh, encryption client to communicate to the other microservice. So let's uh, start this. OK. So remember, I still have these two um, services running here. Now I have the gateway. And I can do something like this, uh, API, something like this. And as you can see, so this is a raw data, uh, and everything works as expected. It seems like like it's the same as before, but I'm communicating or I'm I'm um, routing all my um, all my calls through this gateway. And as you saw, the V1 was was not defined on the configuration, so this was the default value, right? And every time I reload the page, as I have two microservices, two encryption microservices running, every time I reload the page, uh, Micronaut by default, the HTTP client, uh, is using a uh, round rowing um, load balancing. So it calls one or the other. But as I'm pretty sure that you don't believe me, I'm going to actually show how it's working. So on my encryption service, I'm going to inject the same embedded server I used before. And here I'm going to say um, something like this, embed server.get port. And I'm going to start uh, my embedded server again. Sorry, my uh, encryption service. I'm going to start two instances. So one of them is running in port 549 uh, something, and the other one, it's in 36 whatever. 
So now, every time I reload the application, you can see here the first one. Uh, so every time I reload the application, one of the available backend service is uh, replying that, uh, that request. Uh, if you don't like this policy by default, uh, you can configure it with a different ways. You can also create your own bin implementation, replacing the default um, round robin balancing that Micronaut uses. If you want to have more control, you can also use uh, something like ne Netflix um, Ribbon, I think it's called. So you have plenty of options to customize to customize everything. So now I want to show you uh, another thing. So what happens when, imagine that we have these five microservices that talk to each other, but one of them is not available. What we shouldn't do is just fail, right? Return a five, 500 or 502 and everything will fail. We should degrade, degrade gracefully our, 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 our application. So what I'm going to introduce now uh, on my gateway is uh, that fall back that gracefully degrading things. So uh, what I can do is, this is my, my interface that I, I'm using for communicating to, the, uh, to my backend. So I'm, I'm going to create here uh, an encrypt operations. Uh, this is going to be another interface. I can move this to this one if I want. So you can also share this encrypt operations thing between your projects, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this interface for my controller. So my controller is going to, inter to implement the operations to make sure that I have everything that, I, that uh, to make sure that my, con my entry point, my gateway uh, implements everything that it's done on the backend. And I'm also going to create a new class. Uh, let's call it encrypt fallback, encrypt uh, client fallback, for example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a fallback annotation in this class, and I'm also going to implement here the same operations. And here, uh, what I'm going to do is just return my fallback thing. So imagine you have this e-commerce, and when one of your customers is looking for this item, you have on the bottom uh, recommendations, right? These are the other items that another customer bought. So if this recommendation thing fails, you probably just want to return an empty list, something like that. This is the, the kind of thing that you put in this fallback. So for this case, uh, what I'm going to return is a new uh, my message, and here I'm, going, I'm only going to say fallback. Right? So uh, my encrypt client extends my other interface with the common uh, operations that I want to expose. Uh, my fallback implement that, my gateway controller implement everything. So let's restart this. Uh, as, the, as both backend services are still available, everything should work as before. So reloading the application works as expected, but now if I go here and stop both of the services, right, we have the fallback. We don't need to worry about that. We are not failing. We are not throwing an exception. Just returning our fallback thing. And what happens is that uh, when I start one of them, it's going to register it itself in console, and eventually he will be available. What is happening now is that uh, it's, there you go. So what was happening uh, was that by default, Micronaut catches. Uh, the console services, so we don't need to just ping console every, I don't know, one second or every request to get all the available servers. Uh, so by default, I think it's 30 seconds. You can change that uh, on configuration to put any value you want. Uh, uh, so if you want to ping console or your discovery server every 500 milliseconds, you can do that to make sure that you have updated your list of available available service, okay? So you can also do more things here um, on your fallback, on your fallback. I don't have time to, to show everything, but I'm going to explain. So uh, for example, you can also use this at retriable annotation. Uh, so with this annotation, you can implement uh, your retry policy. So you can say something like, okay, I want to make 
three attempts or five attempts to my backend, to my um, microservice application, I want to delay one second or 500 milliseconds. Uh, this is my max delay that I want to have, or the different multiplier used to calculate the delays. Uh, so just adding this annotation, uh, Micronaut will do everything for you. Uh, you can also use uh, another one, which is a circuit breaker, to implement this circuit breaker pattern. So if your backend service is not available, you don't want to continually send more and more and more requests because it's not available. So with this circuit breaker pattern, you open the circuit, you return your fallback, and once uh, every, I don't know, uh, one per second, you the circuit breaker will get one request, will send that request to the backend. If it's available, we'll close the circuit, all the requests will go back to the backend. But if it's not still available, you will return uh, your fallback. And again, you can customize this with a lot of things. Uh, if you prefer uh, using something like Netflix Hystrix for the circuit breaking pattern, you can use it. There is a um, Micronaut provides um, a configuration for that, so you only need to add the, the right uh, feature when you create your, your application with the command line interface, uh, and you are done. Or you can manually add the dependencies uh, if you want. Okay, so what else? Let's, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this. Everything should still work, right? I have a one, one backend. So I'm going to stop this. Uh, I'm not going to, to stop the, the gateway. And what I'm going to show you now on my encrypt service is, um, is Graal VM. I'm going to talk a, a little bit about, about Graal. As you probably are aware, Oracle is developing a new, uh, a new virtual machine, Graal VM, or Ansustrate VM, that allows to create uh, native, native images of, of your application. This means that it's a binary that run on your operating system without the JVM involved. And that allows to have applications that start really, really fast and consume just a few megabytes of RAM. So as Micronaut, uh, so GraalVM is uh, still experimental. Uh, the latest release was RC10, I think, uh, last week. <laughs> Sorry, nine, RC9. Um, and Micronaut support for Graal is also still experimental. Every time we, they release a new version, we, we do modifications on, on Micronaut to make sure that it works. So now Micronaut works with the latest uh, master branch of, of Graal, but I'm not going to use that. Uh, I'm not going to use RC9 either because they made a, a regression, so I'm going to use um, RC9, sorry, RC8 for my demo. So I'm going to uh, convert this encryption service to a Graal native image. And as you will see, you don't need to do anything different. You have your standard application that I've been developing live here, and you don't need to change anything on your application to make sure that it works with Graal, because as everything in Micronaut is, do is done on compilation time and we don't use reflection, uh, we don't need to worry too much about those details, because Graal doesn't really like too much reflection, dynamic class loading, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, if you want to create a, a, a Micronaut application with Graal support uh, from scratch, you can do something like MN create app, uh, I don't know, Micronaut Graal, and the only fit you, you can pass the feature uh, Graal native image, and that will create uh, the skeleton for your application with all the dependencies you need for, for running and creating the native image for Graal. Uh, I'm not doing this. I, don't want, I do not want to create a new application. What I want to do is convert my existing encryption service to a Graal application. So all the things that I'm going to add now manually are already there here in this application that you have created uh, with the CLI. So you need to add pretty much three things. So the first one is uh, dependency. Uh, runtime for Micronaut Graal and the uh, uh, Oracle Substrate VM. I'm, I'm using RC8 for that. So the next thing you need to do, uh, or that the CLI does for you, is uh, create a file which is called Micronaut Substitutions. And in this file, so you don't need to worry too much about, about this. I'm going to put it here. Probably I, I have a typo on the word, so let's fix it like this. 
right? Uh, I'm going to explain everything, but as creating the, the Graal image takes something like two, three minutes, uh, I'm going to create everything. I'm going to run the execution to, to create the, the Graal image. And while it is running, I'm going to explain everything that I've done. And the last thing is uh, a script, build native image .sh, with all the things uh, you need to, to do to, let's close this, to run. Right, and to run the application, so I'm using I'm using now this version of Java. What I need to do is use the Java version with the Graal support. And as I said before, you can switch between JDKs any any anything you want. But if you don't know this amazing tool, SDK Manager, it's it's a tool to basically to um, manage everything for you regarding uh, SDK things. So you have Java, Groovy, Kotlin, Spring Boot, Micronaut, Grails, Groovy, Gradle, a lot of tools that you can just install, remove, and, and use just using the command line. So you saw here, this is the, the version I was I was using. And now I'm, I'm using uh, the version that have Graal support. And you don't need to worry about changing manually the class path. Everything is done for you. So with this version, with this Java version, uh, on the class path and available uh, to create the, the native image, I can run the script. And as I said, uh, this is this takes all around two, three minutes. And one of the things it, it does is it uses a lot of memory. And I mean a lot. I have here, I'm using now around six gigabytes of RAM. Uh, so you will see that this, this chart is going to be something like 80, 95%. It's going to take six, seven gigabytes of RAM. And my four CPU score are going to 100%. So it's already uh, creating the image. So let's explain the things that I added. So I talk about the dependencies. This file, this Micronaut substitution file, uh, so you don't need to worry about it. We maintain that file. But basically, this is used to declare uh, the unsafe usages inside Micronaut, basically for caffeine and for Neti. So uh, Graal used this information to know how to, uh, how to deal with that classes. But as I said, don't worry about this. We, we do care about that. And the other thing, it's this script. Uh, there is a, another version for, for Maven. So the first thing you do is you create your fart jar for your application, and then once the fat jar is created, uh, so this is the name, we run this class inside uh, the, the jar, the jar, the fat jar. So this class, what is going to do, as you can see here, uh, this thing. Uh, this this uh, thing runs and basically it analyzes your, your class, your, your classes, your dependencies, and creates this reflect.json file to declare uh, some kind of usages of reflection that then we use here. This the, the file is used here. So basically, we use, we use this to let uh, Graal knows how and when we are using reflection uh, because some parties and uh, some things use a little bit of ref uh, reflection or dynamic class loading. So with this, Graal knows how to actually create the the, the, the native image. Uh, so just you can see here. This is the name. On the file I'm, uh, I'm going to create, this is my entry point. Uh, and as you can see, my laptop is going to take off. Or the CPUs, 100%, a lot of RAM. So it's it's uh, still creating the, um, the image. right? I think it, it will be done in, in something like 30 seconds or so. And we also provide one other option when you create uh, the, uh, the, the Graal application from the command line. There is also a Docker file. So, uh, I prefer to do this um, because I'm running on Linux. So Graal is only available for Mac and Linux. It's not available on, on Windows. But if you use Windows, you can use the Docker image we provide uh, to create a Graal native image uh, inside a Docker container. So you don't need to worry about nor not, not being running Linux or Mac. And you can also, if you want, you can run that uh, application that uh, native image inside a Docker container. Uh, and this is cool because you can um, create that Docker container for your Graal application and deploy that Docker container as you already probably are doing to any uh, application provider on the cloud and it will be deployed as before. Right, so it finished. 
So now you can see here something like eight gigabytes of RAM. And what I have now here, it's uh, my encrypt service. This is a, a native image, so you can see uh, 40, 46 megabytes of, of size. So everything is there, right? So you don't need to worry about anything. All the dependencies, this is a, a native binary for the operating system. And what I can do is basically run it. So encrypt service, and you are done. You can see here that the application started in 19 milliseconds, which was. Uh, so if you remember, uh, when I was running here, so last run took uh, 100, so one, one second and a half, right? From my IE, that the Java application, but it only took 19 milliseconds to run uh, inside uh, or with the native image. And this is a fully functional application. You can see the application itself registered in, in console in this port 11193. So if I go back here to my gateway and reload the page, we, here, there you go, 99913. So uh, everything works and it's the same, but it's pretty fast. This is this this uh, native image is uh, it's taking just a few megabytes of RAM. Uh, a typical Micronaut, a typical Hello World Micronaut application took something like seven megabytes of RAM. So you can start it with DAS MX, XMX, EXMS, um, seven or eight megabytes of RAM. When you add a few more dependencies, you need to increase something like, I don't know, 12, 15 megabytes. But I'm pretty sure that this native image will use just a fraction of, of that, right? So uh, regarding of Graal, um, basically, as I said, the, the Graal VM is still experimental, right? So in this case, it works and it starts in 19 milliseconds. Our support is still experimental and it pretty much depends on the third parties that you use. And you need to something like try, uh, try if it works because something like, uh, for example, Hibernate, you may want to use Hibernate. Um, basically, that's, it doesn't work because Hibernate use uh, reflection uh, pretty much everywhere. So you need to rely on those third parties libraries to add Graal support in order to use that. But if you if if your third party is Graal compatible, you can just use it with in Micronaut without without problem. Uh, we know that at this moment the HTTP server is working, the HTTP guy in, uh, it uh, works in Graal, uh, service discovery works, security also works in uh, with Graal. So we know that a lot of or Quite a few things in, inside the framework work, works uh, with Graal, but everything is experimental. So we will continue adding support for, for that. Uh, so I think that's all. Let's summarize everything. Uh, so uh, with Micronode, you can create uh, uh, microservices in the language you want, Java, Groovy, and Kotlin. Uh, remember, for Java and Kotlin, we use um, a annotation processor. For Ruby, we use uh, AST transformations. Uh, we, you can create natively cloud-native applications. Uh, you've seen here in the demo uh, discovery client support, uh, uh, your uh, HTTP client. Uh, I don't have time, but I would like to show you, uh, for example, this distributed tracing with Zipkin or with Jagger. You only need to add a few dependencies, start your Zipkin server, uh, and basically you are done. But I don't have time for, for that. Uh, we use the same dependency injection and the same mechanism that we are used um, when coming from Grail so for, for, from Spring. So you don't need to change your mind when you when you uh, start using using Micronaut, it's, it's pretty simple to, to use the same things that we love uh, and we are already using. Uh, everything is done at compilation time, it's reflection free, uh, as you've seen, so pretty fast startup, uh, low memory consumption, Graal support, as I said, fast startup. And you increase the developer productivity, you can, you can do a lot of things. Uh, you've seen in 40 minutes, I've done a lot of things. Uh, and you can do more if you have more, quite, quite more time. So these are a few resources. Uh, the first one is the Micronaut web page. Uh, the second one is the latest version of the documentation. Uh, we have a pretty extensive documentation. And we are working now on supporting all the examples in the documentation in the three languages and also uh, for the dependencies in Maven and Gradle. 
So we know that we can, we need to improve the documentation a little bit more, but it's really, really good. So take a look. Uh, the next one is a GitHub web page. Uh, guides.micronaut.io. Uh, if you want to start doing something and you are not pretty sure, go to that web page, guides.micronaut.io. You have guides that, that explain in something like 15 to 30 minutes how to do something. So I want to use Micronaut with uh, JPA and Hibernate. You have a, a guide for that. I want to, to know how to use, uh, for example, Zipkin for my distributed tracing. You have. Uh, I want to use uh, JWT security. There are guides for that. So I, there are something like 30, 40 guides. Uh, most of them are in the three languages. And a few of them are only in Java. And the Groovy specific languages guides, sorry, are only, of course, in Groovy. And the last URL is our, our Gitter channel. Uh, the team are there. So if you have some questions, uh, you, can, you can connect there. And we will, be, we, we will help you uh, uh, with that. So if you have also more, if you want to, to learn more about Micronaut, uh, Graham Roche, the team, the, the creator of Micronaut, which he's there. Say hi, Graham. So he's going to, to do a talk uh, at one something, I think. Uh, and then there is also going to be a buff session uh, during lunch or after lunch. Uh, so if you, want, if you are interested in, in Micronaut, Go to, to both uh, Grimes talk or the buff session. And I have here some uh, stickers, buttons, and some t-shirts from Last Grid. So if you want to grab any of these, you can, you can grab them after the talk. And that's pretty much all. This is my contact information. Uh, the code is already available on, on my GitHub account. I'm going to tweet about it. And if you have something like 30 seconds, please go to that URL uh, or that QR code. Uh, it is just an anonymous Google form to send me some feedback uh, about the talk. It, it's, it has four questions. So if you have 30 seconds, please go there. If you, uh, if you like the talk, the talk, let me know. If you didn't like, also let me know. Also, please remember to rate me or send me feedback. If you prefer, uh, you can use the uh, DevOx official application, but please send, send feedback. It's, it's good for, for, for us, for the speakers, to get some feedback from, from the attendees. And I, have, I think I have something like three minutes so, for questions. So if any of you have some questions. Yes? Yeah, so the question is, uh, I'm using Consul for the service discovery, uh, but is there any other support for discovery services, right? So we support uh, Eureka, and there is also support for Kubernetes, yes. Uh, you only need to add the Kubernetes thing, and Kubernetes uh, expose everything using, I think, environment, variable, em environment variables, and you just need to use the right environment variables inside your applications. Uh, yeah, and you're done. Anything else? Yes? Uh, if you use Micronode, that doesn't mean that you cannot use dependence, Spring dependencies anymore. Uh, you can. Uh, you can add any dependency. Uh, you can add, uh, if you want, you can add, uh, I don't know, Spring JPA, if you like. Uh, but that will bring a Spring to your class path, and you will lose a little bit all the features in Micronode. If you are more interested about how to use or how to combine or deal with uh, or migrate from Spring Boot to Micronode, I, you, I suggest you to go to Grimes' talk. He's going to show you, or he's going to show uh, really, really nice features. I'm not going to say, I don't going to say anymore. I'm going to hide in a little bit. So go to, to his talk to, to see all the things that you can do. But the, the, short, answer, the short answer is yes, you, you can do that. You can add any, any dependency you want. Yes? Sorry? Server send events? Yeah. Uh, we do have support for server and send events and web socket, web socket uh, clients uh, and, and, and server. Yep. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you all very much.